thing like, oh, I want to film this so people can see it, but I want to watch it with my own eyes. So it was kind of like I had my camera and I'm like, okay, no, it still looks good. And I'm looking up here and I've got the team with me and everybody, everybody's just in good spirits, right? Because going up to it, they were like, you know, there's, there's still a chance that it couldn't launch. But, you know, once they inflate the balloon, it's like 90%. And then, so they inflated the balloon and it was so close. And then it finally goes and we're like, yeah, we did it. My name is Julie Hoover and I'm the faculty sponsor of HASP. HASP stands for the High Altitude Student Platform, and Durham Tech is part of a consortium of schools that are working together to launch a payload. HASP was launched in September um, from Fort Sumner, New Mexico at the Columbia Scientific Ballooning Facility, which is run by the NASA Balloon Program Office. For our first year of HASP, we built a payload called GOAT, which is the Greenhouse Ozone and Atmospheric Trace Gas Experiment. and our experiment is designed to use sensors to collect greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. GOAT was attached to HASP, which is a much larger platform. You can think of something like a satellite or something like that. And 12 schools from all over the country also built payloads that attach to HASP. The launch itself was incredible and overwhelming because the entire time it was happening, I really had to remind myself that we had done this. We had put together something that was now going to be, you know, cruising around in near space for the next 18 hours. Just being able to see GOAT part of that and, and part of such a, an official NASA mission uh, was really incredible and kind of a, a, an overwhelmingly emotional way. I'm Jimmy Acevedo and I'm the student team lead for HASP. It was a huge relief to watch it actually take off, not only because it represented um, over a year of work and hundreds and hundreds of man hours, it focuses and provides purpose towards the sorts of things that you're learning and like, why am I actually going through hours and hours of grinding away at the calculus. Um, it's because we do things like this. My name is Daniel Raymond Corris and I am the software and electrical team lead for uh, has Watch Live Video as something that I help build and program and essentially make work, fly around in space. It was just, it was life changing and now I have more meaning to the future of my career. They plugged it in and then they were loading it up on, and it's it's this long grueling process where they, and they're using very old computers to talk with this because it's a very like, it's just an old system, but it's reliable, so they don't bother to mess with it. It's a very NASA thing, right? If it works, don't fix it. Um, and so it was a slow process, and he, he's going through, and he's going through, and he's like, okay, we got a file here, and then he opened it up, and it, everything looked right, and I was like, that was so good. It's an experience I wouldn't trade for almost anything. At the end of the day, hands-on experience, students actually banging wooden, plastic, and metal together, learning how things are built, uh, is a very valuable thing that translates to all walks of life. Now I feel like the students are confident, they feel like they're experts on a lot of these subjects, and it's been really exciting to watch them blossom. We are starting the application process to apply for HASP again this year. Uh, we're looking at robotic arms with computer vision that will mimic what robotic arms are doing through satellite servicing. The students, when they come through this, they're working with students at other schools, they're working with other people from NASA, and they feel like they're colleagues. They can have conversations about the same things being interesting to them. And being able to go out not only to another university, but in the job market with that sort of self-confidence, I think is a really special thing and why we need to be doing more of these projects, um, especially at the community college level.